This is John from Legacy Woodworking Machinery. I am excited today to start showing you some of the really cool new features in Aspire 12.0. So let's get started. We're gonna get started with probably my favorite tool path addition to all of Aspire 12.0. And we're gonna start by just getting a 12 by 12 by three quarter inch piece of material up here. Okay. All right, we're gonna put our Z0 on the top of the material or the material surface. And our XY datum can be wherever you like it. I prefer mine in the bottom left-hand corner or in the center, depending upon what I'm doing. So on this one, I'm going to leave it bottom left corner. I like to keep my material resolution very high. Um, and I do that on purpose. I like really detailed stuff. And that means a higher resolution is going to give me a better quality drawing. So I'm going to come down here and click high. Let's go ahead and click on OK. So, all right, with our part set up today we, we will be working on the v-carve inlay toolpath so the first thing that we need in here is a picture now we can either draw on ourselves we can do some vector stuff or we can import a bitmap and today I opted to import a bitmap because I want to show you another cool tool that's actually a combination of two icons from back in the earlier versions of Aspire that's this one right here Okay, this is called import a bitmap or a vector from a file into the current job. Okay, so before you could pick one or the other one in two separate items, two separate keys. Um, now it's all together. So I'm going to click on that one. I'm going to bring in this cool nautical star. All right, I like this because you can use this for inlay and it looks really neat. You can go with a dark wood and a light wood combination and it just looks really cool. So I'm going to use this one. We're going to select it. And then we're going to go over here and we're just going to use the trace bitmap tool and we're just going to go ahead go black and white and preview i'm going to leave all the settings exactly the way they have them and apply and then close okay here's this now i don't want to see my bitmap and i have two options here i can go up to layer one and i can turn off my bitmap layer here but if i'm going to be importing more pictures or doing anything else then i don't want to do that because i want to keep that layer active and on so instead, I can use this tool. It's called Toggle the Bitmap on and off. So that lets you turn it off, but then it's still there in the background. Just click back on instead of having to come over here with lots of other clicks. So quicker, faster, easier. Love it. Always cool to do that. Okay, with this done, we are ready to go ahead and work on our other, um, work on the toolpath side of the world. So we're going to do a quick sketch over here, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. This is essentially what we're doing with the V-Carve inlay. So we're going to come down here. We're going to make our material. Okay. And then we're going to come here. We're going to say this is our inlaid material. Okay, we're going to keep it right here. And it's going to look like this and this. All right. So what happens here is we want to set up and decide how big everything is, how big our glue gap is, how big our um, how big our surface gap is, and then how deep everything else is. So here's our piece, and this is exactly what our icon looks like. So let's go over to the other side of the world here. Let's just leave that one open. But we're going to use this new toolpath called VCarve Inlay Toolpath. Okay, here she is. Okay, and our little icon right over here is going to have three questions you have to answer. First is the pocket depth. That's the depth from this point here down to this point here. It's gonna be the depth of the actual inlay. And in this one, I'm gonna leave it at a quarter of an inch. This is from the last time I did this. So it's a quarter of an inch. And it has the glue gap. That's this little gap right here. This is the gap for the excess glue in your inlay to go. As you're clamping these two pieces together and you're squeezing them nice and tight right here, all the excess glue is gonna come out of there. It's either gonna come up the top or it's gonna go down the bottom. If it goes down into the bottom, we want to make sure that there's enough room down here for the glue to go so that you get a nice fit. Okay. And then we have the surface gap. It's going to be the gap between the male plug and the female inlay. So it's going to be right in between those two there. So we're going to leave it just the way I've got it already. I'm using a 60 degree end mill for, or 60 degree V bit for this one, along with a quarter inch end mill to do all of my clean out. So I'm going to select all of this and I want to come out of node so we're just going to go ahead and select all this stuff here 
All right, so from here, now we've asked for the plug outer boundary. The plug is the male portion of the inlay. And in the past, we've had to draw something like a box, you know, around the piece and say, you know, use this as the boundary. And we don't have to do that anymore. So all we're gonna do is just go ahead and let's get rid of our box and just select our piece we wanna do the inlay on. And what it's gonna ask is, do we want the sheet limit? Sure. Or do I wanna put a vector offset? So if I wanted to take the outer star and offset it outwards, I could use that as well. But today I'm just gonna use my sheet limits. I'm gonna use the entire sheet. Okay. So let's go ahead and just calculate this and see what it does. Now on this one, it builds both tool paths at once. Okay. So if we turn off these bottom two, okay, that's the female. And the top two are the plug, that's the male. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the male looks like. We have our visible tool path. Okay, you notice how it just went ahead and took away everything around the outside because we use the boundary of the box as our boundary and it left the inside upwards. That's gonna go into the female pocket of the inlay. All right, so this is this one. Now what I want you to remember is that this one is actually flipped upside down. So if we look at our tool paths again here, they're going to be backwards from our picture okay, because we're looking at it from the bottom. We want to look at it from the bottom because, again, it's the male side. It's going to be taken and put down into the female part, which is going to be the part of the inlay that we keep. So this is the male version, and it's the opposite of the female version. All right, let's go back to the top side again. Okay. And let's reset our tool paths, and let's look at now the... Oh, this is the female side here. So let's go ahead and prepare our visible the female. There she is. Okay, so this is going to be the part where the male is going to go into. And that is all there is to it. Now, the last step to an inlay is always surfacing off the top of your inlay piece. How do we do that? Now, there's lots of different ways you can. Um, I'm going to do it the easiest way that I know how, which is just draw a rectangle bigger than this based upon the cutter that you're going to use. And I'm going to use a pretty big cutter. So I'm gonna go with the yeah, 13 and three quarters is plenty. It looks great. And I'm gonna go ahead and just center that up. So now we're going to our pocket tool pass and I'm gonna put my cut depth at zero. I'm gonna remove both of those cutters. There's no need for those. And I'm gonna select, I'm gonna come down to my surface planing and I'm gonna grab an inch and a quarter cutter. Big cutter from Magnate, it's Magnate number 2704. Phenomenal tool. And I'm just gonna use this one to take everything off the top of it. Yeah, I'm going to make this tool number three. It's going to be the third tool in my set of tool paths that I'm using. Everything else looks phenomenal. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply, select. And then this one, I'm going to do a raster tool path with no profile. And I'm going to raster with the grain. Just for sanding, make it easier later. Now, go ahead and calculate. Okay. What you're going to notice right off the top, if we reset our preview here, we rock this up, is that it works right on the surface. It's not cutting down into the material at all because I put my cut depth to zero. Now, is it actually zero? The zero of our board, which is the female portion, is right here. Now you've glued on the top of your male piece, which is this one, down onto it. So the best and easiest way to make sure that you get that and you can get to this surface here is just take a corner off of your male portion of your inlay before you glue it all together. It's a lot easier than doing it afterwards. Um, but go ahead and just take off that corner so that you can access the top of your female right over here to set your new zero height. Once that's done, run this pocketing tool path. It's gonna clean it all off. It's gonna make it look great. You're gonna have a phenomenal inlay. All you've gotta do now is just sand any tooling marks and any extra glue off the top of there, put a nice finish on it, and boom, you're done. All right, now's my challenge to you. My challenge is, I wanna see what you guys are gonna make. I've walked through it. You can watch, pause, watch, pause, watch, pause until you've got it perfect. And I know it won't take you very long. Once you get it done, I wanna see what you guys have done. So, over the next week, um, send me some pictures. Send me what you've done. You can drop me an email. It's john at legacywoodworking.com. Show me all the cool stuff you've made with this new cool inlay tool path. If you have any questions, give us a call. It's 801-491-0010. If you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what else you want to see. 
Tell me about the coolest new feature that you found in Aspire 12. Let me know your thoughts. Love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so much for being here this morning. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Have some fun. Be nice to people. See you guys in the next one.